السلام علیکم اسٹوڈنٹس اینڈ ویلکم ٹو علامہ اقبال اوپن یونیورسٹی سیریز آف ایم بی اے پروگرامز مینجمنٹ انفارمیشن سسٹم دا سبجیکٹ کورس ٹائٹل فار وچ از اسٹوڈنٹس ان دا فرسٹ یونٹ دیٹ از ان دا فرسٹ پروگرام وی اسٹارٹیڈ دا انٹروڈکشن ٹو مینجمنٹ انفارمیشن سسٹم ان ٹو ڈیز یونٹ وی آر گوئنگ ٹو اسٹڈی اے رادر لٹل مور ایڈوانس لیول آف دس سبجیکٹ اف وی گو ڈیپر ان ٹو اٹ وچ از انفارمیشن ٹیکنالوجی ایز یو آل نو اٹ از دائی ہارڈ نیڈ آف ایوری ایوری فیلڈ اینڈ ایوری ٹیکنالوجی دیٹ وی آر اسٹارٹنگ دیز ڈیز سو یو نیڈ ٹو بی ویری کیئرفل ان دس یونٹ آئی ایم گوئنگ ٹو انٹروڈیوس سر تنویر السلام علیکم اینڈ ویلکم سر اینڈ وی آر گوئنگ ٹو موو ٹوڈ دا فرسٹ تھنگ دیٹ وی آر گوئنگ ٹو اسٹڈی ٹو ڈے سر پلیز ٹیل اس واٹ از بیسیکلی انفارمیشن ٹیکنالوجی information technology is uh, in fact uh, uh, the combination of computers and human beings and the usage of this uh, high tech okay so okay. today we'll be discussing the various types of computers and how they were evolved over the period of time all right all right so the first thing that we are going to study is uh, basically the trends and generations of computer systems yes sir please okay The students, the, com- the history of computers is very old. In fact, you must have heard about the beads, uh, you know, these rods and there exactly. were beads in it. That was called abacus. abacus. So that is the basis of the computer. And in that time, people used to, uh, do, used to, used to calculate over, uh, with exactly. the help of these beads. And okay. the Chinese invented these abacus. Yes. And it was used to count one, one plus one is equal to two, two plus two is equal to four. Exactly. And even kids exactly. are given that in their childhood to study things, to start counting. Yeah. So the electronic computer started back in 50, in, in 30s. All right. Okay. In that time, we used to have uh, diode tubes. Okay. Like you must have seen or maybe you haven't seen, you're not that old enough. <laughs> But in fact, the, there used to be radios and television. When you turn them on, they used to take time to get heat up and then the voice and picture used to come, okay, right? Okay, okay. So that was because of the diode tubes and the p- computer also used to run with, in the, uh, used to run with the h- diode tubes. Okay? All right, all right. So, in and, and that time, the only u- uh, input in the computer was the punch cards. All right. Okay. And uh, there, there he used to be a huge disk that, w- that was the hard disk of that computer. Mm-hmm. And the only language that could run on the computer is the machine language. All right. You know, the computer cannot run without any language. And we'll be discussing more about the languages later. All right. In later. later in this subject. Yes. Uh, sir, uh, there's one question. Are these computers extinct now or are these still being used? No, they are extinct now because of these, uh, there were many problems with the diode tubes. They would take more energy and get her heat up very easily. They were not fuel efficient. They, yes. were, not, they were consuming more energy and exactly. they were not that efficient uh, as compared to the latest ones. Exactly. But the mainframes are still there. All but right. Yes, mainframe mm-hmm. computers, the big computers which had diode tubes, the computers are still there, but diode tubes are not there. In fact, now there are transistors and ICs. Okay, so the second generation of computers is the mainframe computers. In fact, the first generation was also mainframe, but okay. that was made up of diode tubes. And in the second generation, when the transistors were invented back in 50s, okay, so the main computers were made up of transistors. All right. And there were many benefits of the transistors because they used to consume less energy and didn't get very much heated. Okay, okay. And uh, in that time, the high-level languages like COBOL and Fortran were invented. All right, all right. Okay. And that uh, era of the second generation computer lasted uh, from 56 till 1963. Then from 64, the f- third generation computer came into being. Mm-hmm. And at that time, they had invented integrated circuit, the IC. IC, which is nowadays so much frequently oh, used yes. in almost everything. And in, in mobiles in and mobile. in, in everywhere. In everything. Okay. So The, uh, before third generation, they didn't have anything to uh, anything more than the punch cards okay. to feed data into the computer. Okay, so th- after the third uh, in the third generation, they invented this keyboard and monitors. Okay, so these were quite a lot ahead of time because uh, the computer had now a monitor and yes, a keyboard and to the feed keyboard. the data as well. Yes. So we can see the advancement level. You see. Uh, is increasing with generation with the generation and yes. with the invention of these integrated circuits exactly so which is the next yes the, 
Next is the fourth generation computers, which are be being used now. Exactly, the PCs, <laughs> which are going to be extinct, I, I believe, in the next decade, because uh, the technology is so fast increasing these days. It, uh, even if it is not extinct, it, at least it will be reduced in size. Like you, have so you, see, you can see here, from the personal computers, the size reduced to the laptops. And then the tablets. And then the tablets. The iPads. iPads. And that is because of the microprocessor. That is okay. even uh, the miniaturized form of the integrated circuits. Okay. In in one microprocessor, you can have many integrated circuits. Okay. So students, the fourth generation computers are the personal computers. And laptops. And laptops. And laptops. Exactly. Okay, sir. So which is uh, what is uh, the next level that we're going to study? The next uh, level will be the fifth generation, which are being uh, uh, worked on these days. Okay. This, this is re robots. This is the most interesting, most inter interesting I believe. Thing. <laughs> and their main features will be based on artificial intelligence. Okay. Like we discussed in the previous units, that the artificial intelligence is somebody's uh, knowledge that you can feed into the computer, and then the computer will respond based on that knowledge. Okay. okay? So if you feed that knowledge in a robot, it can behave like a human being. Okay, okay. This is what they expect at least now. <laughs> <laughs> and the kids these days are going to really annoy their parents that I want that robot so that he can do everything that you ask me to do. Is that what's going to happen, yeah, Exactly. <laughs> okay. And this, uh, the bo robots will be based on the artificial intelligence. They can have voice recognition and they can even uh, take your commands and act on it. Students, the fruit, uh, the, the robotics is basically the fruit of mechatronics engineering, which is an amalgamation of mechanical as well as electronic, electronic engineering. Yes. So the robots are uh, as a result of that uh, field of engineering. So what are further uh, advancements? Now we come to the input devices. Okay. Uh, what are the various devices through which you can uh, input data into the computer? Okay. Like I told you earlier, there used to be only punch cards in the older times when we on the mainframes. Okay, okay. But now you can have various devices through which you can input data into the computer. Mm -hmm. And the m most common is the keyboard exactly. and mouse. Exactly, which we are so much used to. Yes. And the second is touch screens, hmm. like you have seen on the ATMs. Exactly. You can touch and the computer will take your command. Even uh, the touch screen mobiles are there, which touch is screen mobiles are a there, kind yes. of touch screen. And the third is the webcam, Ooh. like you have seen in the on the, when you talk on the Skype, okay, the person can see you and even your picture and your video, but, uh, yeah, video is transmitted over uh, internet to the uh, some other city or country. Exactly. And uh, the webcam technology is so advanced that you're sitting here and uh, and someone who is like in America or in Canada, nations wide, can talk to you with, I guess, I believe one or two seconds lapse only. Uh, even less than that. Even less, even than, less that. than that. In, in higher technology and in, with the fast internet. Yes. <laughs> and now okay. there are even IP, what we call IP cameras. IP okay. cameras is uh, the cameras which can transmit your picture or anything over the uh, uh, internet. Okay, okay. So if you can, if you install IP camera in front of your gate mm -hmm. and you're even sitting in America, oh. you can see what's going on at you your place. You can monitor the activity. Yes. Okay, okay, that is very advanced level. Okay. And the other in input devices are the microphones. Okay. And the joysticks, joysticks. through which the children can play, play the games. games. And this is the most familiar for the children, I guess. <laughs> yes. Okay, sir. What are the other peripherals, sir? Yeah, the other peripherals is second is the output devices. Okay. So first we discussed the input devices input and devices. now we're going to discuss how you are going to get the result of whatever you are feeding in that device. Exactly, in the computer. Exactly. And the most common is the printer. Yes. And there is some devices which can be used input as input as well as output, like okay. scanners. Okay. Computer can print, give your in, uh, output as a scanner or even you can scan the picture and uh, store it in the computer. Exactly. So it can be used both as Likewise. A, okay. a input as two well ways. as output. Yes, two ways. Okay, okay. And then the second most common is computer screen. Exactly. Whatever computer is uh, the results or your graphics that anything. You can, can see on the screen. You can see on the screen as well as you can print it. Exactly. As well as you can attach other devices like multimedias and then you can have the display. Displays, on yes, bigger yes. screens, on bigger walls as well. Then there are the speakers. The speakers. Which is again uh, if you, you have to listen to some songs or anything or like that. video games. Or video games. And then we have the headphones, headphones because if you yes. have to personalize the uh, output of your computer, you can use the headphone. What are the computer peripherals? More of them. Storage, uh, storage devices. Mm -hmm. Now you you have the input. Now uh, you need to have some place 
to store the data exactly and retrieve it whenever you want it and in the form you want it and why is it so that we need an other uh, storage device because sometimes your own computer or your own device cannot have enough memory to store whatever data you want to keep yes and even if you want to have an archive of all those data these storage devices are really helpful for that so i started with the basically the legacy hard disk that used to be in older times okay so this bigger box is the hard disk of the mainframe computer okay okay and tell you very interesting thing this hard disk didn't have even that much memory that your mobile phone has now these Ooh. days okay so okay. technology has no improved a lot no wonder they have uh, they are in extinct yes <laughs> okay which is the next one sir and the second is your uh, uh, tapes okay legacy and computer tapes legacy computer and these the tape cartridges and these also we don't see anymore i believe ah we don't see it but uh, sometimes these cartridges are used in mean uh, there some there are some companies which are using mid range computers okay so they so still this use cartridge these cartridges are used as a backup only that you can take the data and store it on the, take the data on the cartridge and store it for later use in all cases students you must know the history of whatever device that you are going to use yes. uh, in order to function or in order to use the device that you currently have more efficiently what are the next uh, devices the, these floppy disks which again are, i believe no uh, one is using no one days. is using it but the place is still there in, exactly. in today's cpus in the tower desk tower. or in the desktop and you must have heard about the hard disk but you haven't seen one so this is the hard disk this is how it looks inside okay it's safe to say that i'm old enough that i've used <laughs> floppy disks <laughs> <laughs> and then said the hard the disk. hard disk this is how it this hard disk looks when it is fitted in in the computer okay it and it is same for the laptops as well sir yes okay. only in a smaller size okay okay and this one hard disk is a uh, comprises comprises of many platters okay 10 15 platters depending okay. on the size of the hard disk okay and you can have hard disk this is from 10 gigabytes that means 10 billion bytes Ooh. to 3fb 350 billion bytes terabytes that is uh, no terabyte is 1000 okay it's even uh, more than that no uh, uh, maybe you can have terabytes uh, i haven't heard say one mm -hmm. but the maximum hard disk i have seen is 350 gigabyte okay 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 that that means 350 billion bytes okay that's huge yes mm -hmm. and there are also other devices like the cds usb devices USB universal devices. serial bus which is most commonly used by most students commonly used. and which is the biggest threat for virus for, for virus <laughs> sp virus spread <laughs> exactly sir and there are even these small chips you have seen these are sd cards which i believe which slot disk cards a slot disk card which okay. are fitted in you can fit in your laptops or in your mobile phones mobile phones to increase the memory exactly then beside this input output and storage there are other peripherals like network cards okay this without this network cards your computer cannot be linked to the internet okay, okay. so this is very important it's very important it and is used for intra as well as the internet uh, yes okay Both Be basically ways. internet is the form of internet okay Inter but internet is if you are using internet within your organization mm -hmm. like for example one bank is uh, one bank may be using internet to interact with its branches in other uh, cities. cities exactly then it's called internet then it is called internet okay okay so then the modems are there yes modems are there but these are also going to be uh, extinct now okay for one simple reason the, in the uh, about 5 uh, 6 years back when we were using telephone lines mm -hmm. uh the then the modems were used okay basically modem uh is the uh, combination of two words okay. modulation and demodulation okay okay what is modulation is your computer works on digital signal right whereas your telephone lines uh, transmit only analog signal true so okay so the process of uh, conversion of uh, analog signal to digital signal is Modulation, modulation and the vice versa is demodulation all right all right so this was the basic function of the modem okay but since the time these uh, dsl came dsl stands for digital subscribers link mm -hmm. so this uh, digital uh, dsl does the same work as the modem so we uh, we mean to say that modems are going to be replaced by wireless DSLs. routers or dsls and dsls okay, right okay 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 so what are the wireless routers wireless routers are, are uh, So, same as uh, uh, telephone lines but these are without wire and they can help you uh, link your computer with the internet okay or with the internet service provider okay okay and what are the network switches network switches okay this is very interesting 
Networks basically, when you have a network set within your organization, we call it local area network. Yes. That means you can have one server mm -hmm. and you can have many computers linked to it. Exactly. Also known, uh, known by the short name LAN. LAN. Mm. Okay. So these network switches are used in LAN. You can put one LAN, uh, this network switch on one floor and connect all your computers with that switch and that uh, network switch is connected to the server. Okay. So instead of taking 10, 15 or even 100 lines directly to the server, you can take those lines to the switch and only one line from switch to the server will go. Oh, that's that's quite efficient. Yes. What is the firewall? Uh, firewall is uh, uh, basically a security device for internet. Okay. Like there are many viruses being transmitted on the internet. Okay. So you you can have this fire firewall in the hardware form mm -hmm. as well as there are firewall programs. Yes. You must have seen uh, uh, many messages on the windows that your firewall is exactly, not updated. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Basically, that is firewall in the software form. Okay, okay. And the firewall are, are also on the hardware form. Okay. So you can configure these firewalls to block many websites. Or okay. to block the viruses. Or to block the viruses. Or to block the intruder activity in your computer as yes. well. So what are uh, what is the introduction to application software? Okay, now you have the computer. And, and we have studied the hardware you part. You have studied the hardware part. Now you have to need something mm -hmm. to run it. Like okay. you, you have bought the ca car, but driver is not there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is the, this driver part is being played by these uh, softwares. softwares. Okay. And there are two, these application softwares are two types, general purpose softwares and function, function specific softwares. Mm -hmm. General purpose software is like you, when you have the computer and you install uh, Microsoft Word on it. Okay. Okay. So that Microsoft Word is general purpose software. Okay. okay. Because it solves your many purposes like word processing and spreadsheets. Database and management. Database management. Graphics are yes. there, web browsers and emails, etc. But if you need some specific program, like for example, Lamik by University wants to computerize a student's registration system, okay, mm -hmm. or the result declaration system. So this is called function specific programs. Okay. So these function specific programs uh, are designed for some specific purposes. Specific purposes. So what is going to be the introduction to operating systems? Uh, before we, we move on to that, I would like to tell some uh, software suites that are being okay, used sure these so days. Quiet. Okay. So there are uh, some software suites uh, in uh, uh, offered by many vendors, like this word processor mm -hmm. is offered by Microsoft. Exactly. And on compared to that, their word pro is being offered by uh, Lotus. Okay. Okay. And the, there are some pros and cons of using these suites. Okay. For example, the uh, most many, the uh, biggest benefit of using these suites is in one package you get everything. Mm -hmm. Like we just discussed earlier, mm -hmm. that in Microsoft, if you find, if you take Microsoft Word, MS, or you take uh, MS uh, Office, or MS Office. So MS Office has got everything. It has mm -hmm. got uh, Word. It has got PowerPoint, spreadsheet, PowerPoint, everything. Excel, everything Excel. is there. And the benefit of using suites is that you can t take file from one the software, like from Word, and mm -hmm. you can copy it in the Excel. Okay. Or you okay. can copy Excel sheet in the PowerPoint. So within that software, whatever application you are going to use is going to support that is document. Is going to support that, exactly. Okay, that's great, sir. But there are other uh, hint sites of this using these suites. Like for example, even you may end up buying things which you don't need. Exactly, exactly. Because uh, sometimes you are a consumer of only Microsoft, only Word, Microsoft Word, but then you have to have that PowerPoint, Excel, etc. with you as well. Yes. Or if you have to buy it. Because these days people usually don't buy it, they download it for free. For free. <laughs> okay, or there sir, are CDs available. <laughs> exactly, there are CDs available at, at a very cheap cost. Sir. Then there are the web browsers and electronic mail. Yeah. If I may explain, it's it's something we uh, uh, young people are very, very much, very much expert in. <laughs> the web browsers, uh, there are of many kinds. There is Opera, there is Chrome, and there is Firefox. Uh, there is Explorer, Internet Explorer, Internet which Explorer. is very commonly used by the computers. And for the electronic mail purposes, even there are so many servers. There is Yahoo Mail, Hotmail, Gmail. All these mail uh, servers can be used for the internet usage purposes. Yes. 
for sending and receiving mails or for browsing any kind of thing that you want to know about. And without browser, you cannot access internet. You cannot access the internet. So you have to have a browser and that to a fast one. Or even you can access electronic mails. Exactly. Then we have usage of uh, web browsers. This is just an idea to give you what, uh, uh, which browser is being used mostly all right, these days. All right. Internet Explorer is, the, uh, is highest, being used yes. at the highest mm -hmm. rate. Sir, uh, we are going to uh, discuss the introduction to system software and please uh, tell us what is it. Yeah, okay. So after the application, application systems, we come to the system software. Okay. Yes. yes. And the system software is, uh, uh, we, you, we have the car but we don't have the driver because uh, the uh, system software plays like a driver in the car. Okay, okay, okay. So in the uh, um, uh, main program, the system software is the operating system. Okay. Without operating system, you cannot even start a computer. True. You must have seen, like when you turn on the computer, there is flickering on the screen, and it comes alive after some time. Okay. So during that time, in fact, it are what we call booting. The computer is booting itself. For the system software. Or it is booting the system software. Okay. It's loading the system software. And this system software comprises of many things, like it has got uh, operating systems, it has got compilers, then it has got drivers. It has got the network management programs. Everything, the everything that you need to run on the computer. On the computer, that's perfect. So basically, it's the uh, it's this uh, system on which we are going to run our PC exactly. or our device, whatever we are talking about. Okay. If you, if you want, I can explain some of this, like okay. compilers. Mm -hmm. Compilers are also small programs uh, which convert your high-level language mm -hmm. to the low-level language. Computer cannot understand. We'll be discussing what high and low-level languages are sh uh, shortly. That's great, sir. So it's it's good that we're just giving an introduction. Yeah, right introduction. Now. Yes, the compilers convert basically high-level language into the machine language. Computer can understand only a machine language, and it runs in machine language. Okay, okay. And then again, it converts it for the user to understand it. User to understand okay. it back to the high-level language. Sir, perfect. I got it. So what is the introduction to operating system? Well, uh, operating system is the most important part in the computer. Okay. When you uh, go and buy uh, and buy a computer, the shopkeeper asks you, okay, what do you want? The Windows or the Linux or what? Okay. Okay. So, okay. so these Windows and Linux are operating systems. Okay. Okay. Maybe Android or. Uh, Android is for uh, uh, your mobiles only all, all right it's my smaller version of the operating system but it is for mobiles only and since you all know that uh, these days uh, we have operate full-fledged operating systems in your mobile phone in your mobile well. phone as well. so android is for that and then we have io management which is these are the basic uh, functions of the operating system what okay. does it do basically mm -hmm. so basically the uh, uh, function of the of an operating system is to interact between the machine Okay. and the user okay okay that is the function like you must have noticed when you click on the icon on the screen of the laptop how does the computer know you want to open that particular icon program, program? Okay. Mm -hmm. so basically when you click on the uh, icon the computer sends in the, the operating system sends an instruction to the uh, hard disk and uh, tells the hard disk to open the to load this uh, program okay okay so that is the link between uh, ah, the operating, system. Oper operating system and, the, and uh, the operating system is a link between user and the machine okay that's great L let me explain some more functions okay, of the operating sir. system All right. to use the uh, various resources of uh, computer mm -hmm. efficiently okay 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 like uh, for example you can you must have seen you can open two three windows simultaneously yes yes okay. we can so this is the CPU, the, uh, this is the operating system that manages which part to uh, which part to load and which part to not to load. Okay, okay. So the central processing unit is being managed by it. Managed by operating system. That's right. And the various resources or various peripherals attached on the CPU are being used by the operating system efficiently. Okay. Then it uh, it uh, it uh, also uh, plays a vital role in memory management. Okay. And, and there the are two kinds of uh, memories, RAM and ROM. RAM and ROM. Okay. Basically, when uh, uh, we talk of the memory management, that means the operating system interacts with mostly with the RAM. Okay. Which okay. is uh, in the computer and alive at that time. And, and the which is being used at that which time. Which is being used at that time. Okay. okay. And the device drivers. Uh, device drivers means when you attach a peripheral, mm -hmm. you must have seen many times that the driver is not loaded. Exactly. It asks that the driver is not installed not or installed. it's updating itself. Yes.
For example, if we attach a, a USB even, uh, yes. sometimes the computer asks for the drivers of it as well. So in device drivers, it actually equips itself with, uh, with, the, with, every, with that device? Yes, uh, what the driver does, does is every uh, hardware comes with some sort of uh, instructions that okay. how to operate that. And the driver comprises of that instructions. Okay, and evident by the name driver, yes, which is driver. driving basically which is driving that driving basically that. Okay. So and we're done with these things. Yes, and the I/O management also. I/O management means inter-output management. Okay. Input-output management. What input-output is like you are sending some instruction to uh, to the printer. Okay. So operating system tells which part and, and how much of the output be sent to the printer so that it is not logged. It is not blocked. Okay, 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 okay. That is it. Yes. Okay. Now and, the, and the lastly is the application. Application means the all the programs that you run that are, are being, being run on the computer. Yes. Anything which are uh, which is being run. For example, even the MSN Messenger is an application itself. Yes. Okay. So what are the layers of software in central processing yes. unit? N now we have talked of uh, application software and we have talked of uh, system software. Now, how these interact with each other? Mm -hmm. Okay. So there are layers. There of are layers of the okay. layers of interaction. In the lowest level, we have the hardware. Okay. Okay. As and we have already discussed, there is the CPU, yes, there discs, CPU. mouse, monitor, etc. Everything et CPU attached to the CPU. Anything that you can touch basically is the hardware. Hardware. Uh, in hardware, we have softwares. Okay. okay. And there are two kinds of software that I told earlier: mm -hmm. the system software and the application software. Okay. So after you after you have hardware, you have to install the operating system. Okay. That is the system software. Okay. And system software comprises of these operating systems, okay, and the utilities and many other things. And many other things. And over these system software, you have to uh, you can uh, you can install application software. Okay. And without the system software, you can run uh, uh, application software. Okay. 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 So in application software, you can have all the things that you are using these days. Is uh, Bird, pro MS Word. Hai. Uh, there are other things, okay, like uh, computer games and spreadsheets, word processor, everything that you are using for your own purpose is all application right. software. Okay, students, and uh, we are going to study the last thing in today's uh, unit, which is the programming language and programming packages. When we talk about information technology, we are further going to study what are the next things in information technology in the next unit. But for now, it is the last thing that we are going yeah. to study. Okay, so please tell us, what are the programming languages? Like I just, I just talked about the application software. So all these softwares have to be written in some computer language. Okay. And there are many kinds of computer languages. We can start with the machine language that used to be the basic language. Okay. That they, in older times, people used to write their programs in in machine language. Okay, okay. But now we have the high level languages and there, if you go in the systematic order, after machine languages, we had assembler language that were being used on the mainframes. Okay. Then the high level languages which are still being used and the fourth level la generation languages and object-oriented object languages. Object-oriented languages, web yeah. languages, that is the HTML, HTML. Java. Yeah. We on, o often see the uh, signal being coming when we search for a certain website. And then there are certain programming packages as programming well. Programming packages, of, uh, like we have pre-written uh, uh, pieces of languages, pieces of applications okay. in C Sharp, and we can use, for databases, we can use SQL Server, so okay. that comes in bundles, and then we call it Application programming, package, packages. programming packages. All right, and there's also an Oracle developer. Oracle well. developer, which which is uh, interactive. You can interactively develop your programs okay. without having to code anything. Okay, students, as you all know, it's a more technical thing. So uh, you do not need to understand what basically language is. How do we make the languages? Yes. So we are just going to name. Uh, we just named them, and with this, I guess we have come to the end of today's uh, unit as well. Okay, so students, uh, today as uh, you all know, we studied management information system further under it, under this course title, we studied the information technology, and I'd like to uh, thank you, sir, for being with us, and uh, if there are any questions that you would want to uh, ask, you, you should uh, watch these programs again and again so that you can understand what this course is all about. Thank you very much. We'll see you next time.